Common problems that we encounter here at the center include turtles that have been hit by cars or lawnmowers or even attacked by a domestic pet. This causes painful damage to their shells, which are actually an integral part of their body and skeletal structure and aren't separate like a lot of cartoons might suggest. This is a significant and traumatic injury that requires specialized medical attention, not only to address the fracture itself, but also any underlying conditions or possible infections. Luckily, there are things that we can do here at the center to help a uh, turtle shell heal, much like a broken bone. We go through this process, months of treatment and care, because every turtle is a really important member of its population at the end of the day. Turtle populations are in decline due to things like habitat loss, the pet trade, climate change, and a lot more. When we can treat and release a turtle because of a human-made cause, it's a small but really meaningful contribution to the ecosystem and future generations of turtles. We are a specialized wildlife hospital that is constantly seeing patients just like this one with access to key equipment and highly trained professionals. Please do not try this at home. The first thing we do with all of our turtle shell fractures is just assess them really thoroughly. So this guy had a full admit yesterday as well as a brief check this morning to make sure his fractures didn't communicate with anything important, to flush them out really well, make sure they were clean. And then once we're sure that it's sort of safe and he's ready to put him back together, we will try to stabilize that fracture. There's a lot of different ways out there to stabilize turtle fractures and do turtle shell repairs. Here, our repair of choice is bars and a putty adhesive to keep those bars in place. We like that because it doesn't cause any further damage to their shells. The tricky part is that the putty can be kind of big and we don't want anything to get into those fracture sites. So our veterinary student who's visiting is going to try to find bars that fit the fracture site really nicely to get those pieces as close together as we can and really just make sure they're not gonna wiggle around because bone cannot heal if it's wiggling. The bars we have are actually really difficult to bend and manipulate. So we reduce, reuse, recycle them. We try our best to clean them and disinfect them between turtles. But then we have a supply. We can bend new ones if we absolutely have to. But basically we're looking for anything that's going to bridge from one fracture segment or fragment to the other without going over top of the fracture line itself. Since these are on the turtle's back, we don't care how high up they sit. Um, that's not going to interfere with this turtle's ability to live his life. The biggest thing is just that we want it to sit kind of naturally and nicely flushed with the turtle shell so that we have a good purchase on both fragments, um, but then not touch the fracture line. This turtle is heavily sedated right now. Um, this would not be something we'd recommend trying without sedation. This turtle also has a lot of pain medications on board. And again, the very first step with fractures is having them assessed by a veterinary professional or a licensed rehabilitator. So without those initial steps, I would never want anybody attempting to repair a turtle shell at home. Always call your local rehabilitator or a nearby wildlife hospital for advice if you have questions and they can get them to where they need to be so that somebody who is trained can repair them. We've had several turtles come in where people have tried to repair them with the best of intentions, but the fractures have been into super lung glue, fields and had super glue in them. And that turtle, the one I'm specifically thinking of, did end up succumbing to like really horrible pneumonia that we couldn't treat. He ended up dying from the super glue in his lungs, not the actual fracture. Um, and sometimes, most of the time, it just makes it a lot harder for us to repair it appropriately. So now we will check these bars on a daily basis for at least the first couple weeks to make sure that everything looks clean, everything's secure and opposed the way we want it to be. We'll continue to flush those fracture sites as best as we can with the bars on. Um, again, just to minimize any risk of contamination, especially because this turtle came in covered with fly eggs. Um, we'll continue to monitor them closely. And then once we feel like everything's clean and healing well, we'll kind of back off on the daily handling so that this turtle is less stressed because that will also help his healing. The less stressed he is, the better he will heal. And in about six weeks, we'll hopefully be able to take these bars off and expect the fractures to be remodeled sufficiently that he can then go into um, a soak tub or even hopefully look at going back out into the wild. 
Sadly, even with all of this care, this specific patient didn't survive, likely due to the severity of its internal trauma. Um, but really, that just goes to show that prevention is always the best way to help wildlife overall. Some things that you all can do to help turtles specifically would include keeping your cats indoors and your dogs on leashes, helping a turtle across the street in the same direction that it's heading in as long as it is safe to do so. Um, don't treat turtles on your own. Definitely call a wildlife rehabilitator if you come across an injured turtle. If you're doing any kind of lawn work, then just try to look for any animals or turtles that might be in the lawn before you do any lawn work. Try to refrain from keeping any turtles as pets. And for other ways that you guys can help turtles, then you can visit our website, wildlifecenter.org. Thank you so much for watching.